kitov tamu hu au kitov adonai Shabbat Shalom. I am really glad that you are here. We are, I tell you what, it's really, for those of you watching on the internet, Brachim uh, Habaim, welcome to you. It's good to have you. We always have so many people who watch on the internet, it's hard to even believe. But uh, we're experiencing something unusual down for the south here, uh, even in January, is it's uh, incredibly cold here. Uh, and uh, please, uh, for I know we have some people who watch up in New York and Connecticut and uh, Canada and, and even Norway. I was, I was in, uh, emailing somebody back and forth this week who watches us faithfully from Norway. So, so don't laugh, but, uh, but I think we're getting down to like 11 or 12 degrees Fahrenheit uh, to, tonight, which is so unusual. It's been many, many years. So in any case, we're the frozen chosen here in the South here today, and we're just enjoying it. Hmm. Don't don't touch that mouse, okay? Please. <laughs> We're going to enjoy ourselves. It is Shabbat. It's just so good to be in the house of the Lord. Let's celebrate uh, God, and He is our Messiah, leading us in our service today and opening us for the word of prayer. is going to be Mark. So you just prepare to receive what the Lord has for you. Shabbat Shalom. Thank you, Rabbi Shabbat Shalom, a virtual Shabbat Shalom to everyone joining us online, and a warm Shabbat Shalom for everyone who is in the building. Welcome to Congregation Beth Hallel, Beth meaning house and Hallel meaning praise, something we love to do in this congregation. Amen? Amen. Well, let's dedicate the service the right way. Let's go to the Lord. God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, we humbly come before you on this Shabbat, this day of rest, to honor it and keep it holy as you commanded, Lord. We ask that you continue to work in our hearts, and we trust by faith that, you, that all the prayers that are lifted up will be to your ears and for your glory and honor, Lord God. We pray your Ruach HaKodesh, your Holy Spirit, be here this, this day, Lord God. We pray this all and dedicate this service to you. In your name, we pray, Yeshua. Amen. Well, let's stand and welcome in the Shabbat with a song. Delay, delay. Okay. <laughs> One, two, three. Four.
and you may be seated. We will enter into the liturgy portion of our worship service. Please join along wherever it says congregation. Baruch Adonai HaMevoach Baruch Adonai HaMevoach Leholam Vahen Bless the Lord who is blessed. Blessed be the Lord who is blessed forever and ever. Blessed, praised, glorified, honored, and exalted be the name of the King of Kings, the Holy One. Blessed be he who is the first and the last, and besides him there is no God. Extol him in the heavens. Lord is his name. Rejoice before his face. His name is lifted up beyond all blessing and praise. Blessed be his name, whose glorious kingdom is forever and ever. Let the name of the Lord be blessed forever and ever. Amen. We'll continue with the Vishamru. And the Vishamru is from the Torah where God gave his commandment to Moses to keep the Sabbath day today holy. And when we say this, we are also acknowledging he is our creator. Vishamru v'nei Yisrael et ha-shabbat la-hasot et ha-shabbat Amen. And the English translation. The children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath, observing the Sabbath throughout their generations as an everlasting covenant. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever that in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth. And on the seventh day he ceased from his work and rested. Amen. We'll now begin a responsive reading. I'll read the first paragraph and just join me on the second. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, ruler of the universe, who by your word brings on the evening twilight and by your wisdom opens the gates of heaven. With understanding, you order the cycles of time and vary the seasons, setting the stars in their courses in the sky according to your will. You create the day and night, causing the light to pass away before the darkness and the darkness before the light. By your will, the day turns into night. The Lord of heavenly hosts is your name. O ever-living God, rule over us forever. Blessed are you, O Lord, who brings on the evening twilight. With everlasting love, you have loved the house of Israel, teaching us your Torah and precepts, your statutes and judgments. Therefore, O Lord our God, when we lie down and when we get up, we'll meditate upon your instructions and rejoice forever in the words of your Torah and in its teachings, for they are our life and sustenance. We'll meditate upon them day and night. May your love never leave us. Blessed are you, O Lord, who loves your people Israel. Amen. Will everyone please rise wherever you are and join us as we recite the watchword of Israel, the Shema. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Ba'uch Shem kavod malchuto leolam vahen. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. Blessed be his glorious name, whose kingdom is forever and ever. Amen. 
we'll begin, we'll continue with the, with the Via Hafta, which is found in Deuteronomy chapter 6. Via Hafta et Adonai Elohecha, Bechol Lavavcha, Uvchol Nashcha, Uvchol Meorecha, Vahu, Habayim, Hale, Asher Enochim, Mesavcha, Hayom, Al Vavecha, Vishinantam, Levenecha, Vitibarta, Bam, Bashiptacha, Vavetacha, Uvlaftacha, Baderek, Ushepacha, Uvkumecha, Uchatom, Leo, Al Yerecha, Vahu, Lototofo, Bain, Anecha, Uchtavtam, Al Mizizo, Betecha, Uvisarecha. Amen. And we'll continue with the English. Let's read this together. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your life, and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as reminders on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. Amen. I'll now read the summary of the Sabbath Amidah prayer. And the Amidah is read while standing as the word Amidah means standing. And we are also facing east towards Jerusalem. For in Ezekiel 43, it states that the Lord will break open those eastern skies over Jerusalem. And it's something we want to be in the right position to see. Amen. Amen. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Velohei Avratenu Elohei Avraham. Elohe Yitzchak, Velohe Yaakov, Ha'el Hagidol Hagibor Vahanara, El 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 Yon Kene Shemayim Varetz. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, and God of our fathers, God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and God of Jacob, the great, mighty, and revered God, the most high God, master of heaven and earth. He with his word was a shield to our forefathers, and by his voice will raise the dead. The holy God, like whom there is none, who gives rest to his people on his holy Sabbath day because he delights in them to grant them rest. Before his presence, we will serve with fear and awe. Daily and constantly, we will thank him with the appropriate praises. He is the God to whom thanksgiving is due, the Lord of peace, who hallows the Sabbath and blesses the seventh day and in holiness gives rest to a people filled with delights in remembrance of the creation. Our God and God of our fathers, accept our rest. Hallow us by your commandments and grant our portion in your Torah. Satisfy us, satisfy us with your goodness and gladden us with your salvation. Purify our hearts to serve you truthfully. And in your love and favor, O Lord our God, let us inherit your holy Sabbath. And may Israel, who sanctify your name, rest thereon. Blessed are you, O Lord, who hallows the Sabbath. Amen. And as our worship team makes his way up, turn to someone next to you. Wish them a Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom to everybody watching online. <laughs> and a virtual Shabbat Shalom to everyone watching us online. If this is your first time here at Congregation Bethel checking us out in person or on the web, you're going to see things that we do maybe a little bit differently than where you're from, what you're used to. You're going to see people raising holy hands, clapping, shouting to the Lord. We want you to know this is all scriptural, all Jewish as well. As we read in Psalm 47, clap your hands, all you nations, shout to God with cries of joy. And in Psalm 63, King David, Melech David said, I will praise you as long as I live, and in your name I will lift up my hands. We invite you to do the same. Now arise, O Lord, to your resting place with all your power and might as we stand here. Clothed with your righteousness, we'll sing and dance for joy. For you have chosen Zion as a place for you to dwell. We will run, we will run to the mountain of God. We will 
call up our fourth our ushers to welcome some very special guests, our visitors. If this is your first time here at Congregation Beth Hillel, welcome. We have something for you, but we need to see where you are. First time guests and visitors, please raise your hand up high and keep it on up. Our 
Ushers are handing out a small packet that includes a blue visitor's card, some information about our synagogue, a name tag, and a pen. Please fill the card out now and drop it in the offering boxes during our offering portion of the service. Also, please put your name on the name tag and stick it to your lapel so we can greet you by name and meet with you after the service. The pen is a gift, New Year's, New Year's gift from us to you. If you are seeing our service for the first time online, a virtual welcome again. And if you have questions, if you want to know more about our congregation, visit our website, bethalel.org. If you have some questions as well, if you want to know about what we're doing at the congregation, email us as well at information, info at bethalel.org with your name and address so we can keep you in the loop of all the exciting things that are going on at the congregation. But whether you're joining us virtually or here in person for the first time, you are now part of our mishpacha, which means family. Welcome to the family. And the announcements are a lot of the things that the family is doing. And in colleges far, far away, there are CBH students in need of snacks. The children's ministry has been sending care packages to college students for over a decade. I'm a recipient. Operation Kid to College. Please consider donating a few items over the coming weeks to help move, make this event successful. See the flyer in the back for more details. Attention married couples, save the date for our first event of 2024 on Saturday, February 3rd at 6 p.m. It will be a night filled with laughter, delicious food, and the best fellowship in town. More details to come. Singles, Rav Akim Yachdav is getting together on Saturday, February 3rd at 2 p.m. For meat, munch, and more. Don't you miss it. The Beth Hillel Business Meeting is on Wednesday, January 24th at 7 p.m. Active members only, please. Exciting news, Joshua Aaron will be here in concert on Sunday, January 28th at 4 p.m. The concert is free, but there will be a love offering received, so come prepared to be a blessing. Attention all members ages 55 and older. The Temple Teens want to take you to lunch. Join the Temple Teens for Lador Rador, Lunch and More, on Saturday, January 27th at 1.30 p.m. This is an effort to bring together two generations to connect and get to know one another better. We are all mishpacha. Please register on the Bethelah website under the sign-up tab. Rabbi? Okay, thanks. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat shalom. I'm excited about that Lador Vador, Lunch and More. I really want to encourage you, though, listen, uh, uh, sometimes uh, the older we get, the more people look at the younger generation and say, well, if they only knew, if they asked my opinion sometime, okay, so sign up. <laughs> they want to hear from you. If you're 55 or older, you don't have to have any teens in the program or anything or children. You just have to be 55 or older. Sign up, come, because our young people want to spend some time with you. And I think that I really think it's a great opportunity to learn both ways, really, from uh, you know, the, the younger generation to, to learn from the more experienced generation, and then the more experienced generation uh, learn how to use their iPhones. Uh, so basically, it's a win-win, is what I'm saying. <laughs> so in any case, sign up on the Bethel website. You can, you can do it even while you're sitting out here. You won't offend me, as long as it's not during my message. Okay. The, the first men's ministry event of the year is Breakfast and Praise with the Brothers on this Sunday. That's this coming Sunday. So uh, this weekend, it's Sunday from 10 o'clock to noon. For only $5, we're going to have a time to enjoy a delicious meal, connect one-on-one -on -one with each other, and enjoy a time of praise. See there, it's going to be next door in our community center. We haven't had, there was a request from the guys that said, hey, listen, since the pandemic, we haven't been doing enough men's breakfast. So... So we're bringing back a few more men's breakfasts this year in 2024. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. That's good. Yeah. So in any case, guys, come this coming Sunday. That's this weekend, 10 o'clock. Uh, and yes, we the heat will be working. Uh, and so uh, make sure to come. We're going to have some great food. It's always a lot of fun. The guys cook it up in the kitchen. They do a great job. And it's just fun to hang. We need this, gentlemen. So that's this coming Sunday. I really want to encourage everybody to come to this. Am I right, George? Absolutely. George is, is one of our main leaders here of the men's group this year, and he, he knows it's important. Amen? It is. Amen. 
Okay, uh, listen, the last thing I wanted to mention is, is that we're very blessed uh, here at Bethel. Every few years, uh, it seems as though we have our leadership team. You know, Messiah Conference is the largest conference of Messianic Judaism in the world every year. Uh, so many people come up to uh, Pennsylvania and uh, during the summer, in the first week of July, and they're already planning and working on Messiah Conference. It's going to be great. But the YMJA, the Young Messianic Jewish Alliance, is the largest youth and young adult organization in the Messianic Jewish movement by far. And, uh, and they uh, put on Messiah Conference for everybody aged 13 to 30. And, uh, and it's a vast amount of planning. There are hundreds and hundreds of, of teens and, and college age and young adults. Uh, and they have to be planned for. And, and, uh, and so the leadership team, the executive team of the YMJA, and then the uh, selects, and, and then you have a leadership team, a whole bunch of people who are coming together to lead all these who, who, uh, teenagers uh, and uh, in college age. And so uh, really excited to have them in because they're actually planning Messiah Conference uh, in large part, or at least them uh, starting to plan it in, 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 uh, to a large extent this weekend. So they're meeting all weekend here. So they, they've, they've flown in all over the, the country, and we don't need to, uh, we won't uh, show them on the, on the camera, but at least I just want to at least recognize them. Uh, they're here today, uh, and I'm just going to hold your applause, please, but I just want to mention some of our, our movement's best uh, and, and folks who are leaders in the movement, for sure tomorrow, but not just tomorrow, today also. Uh, and so again, hold the applause, but we have Ravi from Atlanta, Salva from San Francisco, Melissa from Philadelphia, Hannah from uh, Toronto, uh, uh, Josh uh, from Newport News, he's coming in, Maggie from Phoenix, uh, another Hannah from Atlanta, uh, Joel from Philadelphia, uh, Ari from Toronto, Ivan from Houston, Shauna from here in Atlanta, uh, Adonaya and Ariana from New Jersey, uh, Emily from Houston, Jonathan from Atlanta, Josh from Long Island, Micah from Atlanta, uh, Michaela from Nashville. Wow, that's pretty cool, isn't it? From literally all over North America, and they're all here. Welcome to all of you. It's so good to have you here. Welcome. <laughs> We pray God's blessings for you and your planning of Messiah Conference. I've been a part of many of the of the leadership teams myself uh, for the YMJA back in the old days, uh, and before they had the iPhone. And uh, and in any case, uh, you guys are in store for a great weekend, I know. And and lives are going to be changed inevitably when we ever have our Temple Teen and College Age testimonies at the end of the year. Inevitably, somebody talks about Messiah Conference, about how it was life-changing for them. Uh, and so really, really uh, appreciate all of you and the work that you're putting in. Uh, and it relates some to my message today. So, uh, bro, 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 chim habaim, uh, and welcome to you. Shabbat shalom. Thank you, Rabbi. Well, it's important that we continue to do, as Scripture says in Proverbs 3 and 9, and honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits of all your crops. Let's be generous to God as he's been so good to us. Visitors, we do not solicit your tithes, but if you'd like to bless us with a love offering, we pray that you're blessed in return for your generosity. For those of you who are watching over the internet, you can have your bank send a check through the online bill pay, or you can mail your check to Bethel at 950 Pine Grove Road, Roswell, Georgia, 30075. Finally, also for those of you online, you can click the link in the description box on the video, to give via credit card or hold up your smartphone and scan the QR code to give as well. In just a moment, our musicians will share a song to give you time to click the links. And for those of you who are here in person to um, bring your tithes and offerings to the boxes on either side of the stage. And visitors, this is your time to drop in that blue visitors card as well. As we read in 1 Chronicles 29 and 14, but who am I and who are my people that we should be able to give as generously as this Everything comes from you, and we have given you only what comes from your hand, Lord. Let's go to the Lord and dedicate these tithes and offerings, the gifts, and the giver to him. Our Father, our King, we thank you for this Shabbat and the rest that it brings in you. Let our lives bring you glory, and let us be good stewards of all the good that you've given us. All good things come from you. Lord, you bless us. 
so abundantly. Let us bless, uh, Lord, bless the gift and the giver, and let it all be used for your kingdom. We pray all this in your mighty name, Yeshua. Amen. into the Torah portion of our service. I'd like to call up our ark openers. Please rise when the ark behind me is open and out of respect for the Torah. Please remain in the sanctuary while the ark is open. I'd also like to call up our cantor, Yeshayahu ben Yaakov. And it came to pass, whenever the ark went forward, Moses would say, Arise, O Lord, and let your enemies be scattered. May those who hate you flee from before you, for from Zion shall go forth the Torah, and the word of the Lord out of Jerusalem. Blessed be he who in holiness gave the Torah to his people Israel. Amen. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. We will sing in Hebrew what Mark just read in English. If this is your first Torah service, you're going to hear blessings that are thousands of years old, some that Yeshua heard and probably sang in his synagogue 2,000 years ago. If you know these melodies, please join along. If not, then close your eyes and enjoy the sweetness and timelessness of this part of your Jewish roots. Vayhi bin Soharon, Vayomer Moshe, Kuma Adonai, Veafutsu Oivecha, Veanusu Misanecha, Mipanecha. Ki mitzion tetze Torah. Ki mitzion tetze Torah. Udvar Adonai mirushalayim. Baruch shenatan Torah, Torah. Baruch shenatan Torah, Torah, Le'amo Yisrael, Bigdushato. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. Unique is our God, great is our Lord, holy and revered is his name. Exalt the Lord and let us extol his name together with the Shema. Shema Yisrael. Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad, Echad Eloheinu, Gadol Adonainu, Kadosh Venora Shemo, Gadlul Adonai Ti, Un Rome Mashemo Yachdav. 
Who can be compared to you, O Lord among the gods? Who can be compared to you? Glorious in holiness, awesome in praises, doing wonders. From the song of praise, Moses and the children of Israel sang to the Lord, from Exodus 15, Mi Mocha. Mi Mocha Baelim Adonai. Mi Mocha Nedar Ba Kodesh. No ra te hi lot o se fele. No ra te hi lot o se fele. Ya amod Mordecai Lazarus ben Mardal Shama la Torah. He who blessed our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, may he bless Mordecai Lazarus ben Mardal Shama, who has come up to honor God and the Torah. May the Holy One bless him and his family and send blessing and prosperity in all the works of his hands. And let us say, Amen. Thank you, Yoshiahu. Baruch Adonai Hamvoach, Baruch Adonai Hamvoach Le'olam Ba'ed, Baruch Adonai Hamvoach Le'olam Ba'ed, Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Asher Bachar Banu Mikol Hamim, V'nantan Lanu Et Torato, Baruch Atah Adonai Noten HaTorah, Amen. Bless the Lord who is blessed. Bless the Lord who is blessed forever and ever. Bless the Lord who is blessed forever and ever. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, ruler of the universe, who chose us from all peoples and gave to us the Torah. Blessed are you, O Lord, giver of the Torah. Amen. Today is the 10th day of Shabbat in the year 5784, and the parsha is called Bo or Enter. The Torah reading can be found... Uh, in Exodus chapter 12, verses 31 to 35. During the night, Pharaoh summoned Moses and Aaron and said, Up, leave my people, you and the Israelites. Go, worship the Lord as you requested. Take your flocks and your herds as you have said and go, and also bless me. The Egyptians urged the people to hurry and leave the country. For otherwise, they said, we will all die. So the people took their dough before the yeast was added and carried it on their shoulders in kneading troughs wrapped in clothing. The Israelites did as Moses instructed and asked the the Egyptians for articles of silver and gold and for clothing. The Lord had made the Egyptians favorably disposed towards the people, and they gave them what they asked for. So they plundered the Egyptians. Amen. The half Torah reading can be found in the book of Jeremiah. Chapter 46, verses 27 and 28. Do not be afraid, Jacob, my servant. Do not be dismayed, Israel. I will surely save you out of a distant place, your descendants from the land of their exile. Jacob will again have peace and security, and no one will make him afraid. Do not be afraid, Jacob, my servant, for I am with you, declares the Lord. Though I completely destroy all the nations among which I scatter you, I will not completely destroy you. I will discipline you, but only in due measure. I will not let you go entirely unpunished. Amen. Amen. The Brit Hadashah, or New Covenant reading, can be found in the book of Romans, chapter 11, verses 25 through 29. For I do not want you, brothers and sisters, to be ignorant of this mystery, lest you be wise in your own eyes, that a partial hardening has come upon Israel in, unto the fullness, fulfillness of the Gentiles has come in. And in this way, all Israel will be saved as it is written. The deliverer shall come out of Zion. He shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. And this is my covenant with them when I take away their sins. Concerning the good news, they are hostile for your sake. But concerning chosenness, they are loved on account of the father's. For the gifts and the call of God are irrevocable. Yeah. Amen. Baruch Ata Aronai Eloheinu Melech Haolam Asher Natan Lanu Torat Emet Vichaye Haolam Ata Petuchenu Baruch Ata Aronai Notein Hat Torah Amen. 
Blessed are you, O Lord our God, ruler of the universe, who gave us the Torah of truth and life everlasting planted in our midst. Blessed are you, O Lord, giver of the Torah. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Mark. Now let's bless God for giving us the renewed covenant scriptures. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam Asher Natan Lanu Devar Emet Vechaye Olam Nata Betochenu Baruch Ata Adonai Noten Brit Chadashah Amen Blessed are you, O Lord our God, ruler of the universe, who gave us the word of truth and planted among us life eternal. Blessed are you, O Lord, giver of the new covenant. Amen. Vizod ha Torah, Asher Samoshe, Lifne Bene Israel, Api Adonai, Beyad Moshe. Please join me with the congregational response. This is the Torah which Moses placed before the children of Israel. It is in accord with the Lord's command by the hand of Moses. A tree of life it is for those who take hold of it, and blessed are the ones who support it. Its ways are ways of pleasantness, and all its paths are peace. Long life is in its right hand, and its left are riches and honor. The Lord was pleased for the sake of his righteousness to render the Torah great and glorious. Please join me with the beautiful Eitz Chaim and Hashi Venu. Eitz Chaim hi lama chazikim ba v'tzom cheha meushar derecheha darche noam Vehonativoteha Shalom Hashi Venu Adonai Elecha Venashuva Hadesh Hadesh Yamenu Chadesh Yameinu Kedem. Turn us, Lord, to you and let us return. Renew, renew our days, renew our days as of old. When the ark rested, Moses would say, Return, O Lord, to the myriads of Israel's families. Arise, O Lord, to your resting place, you and your mighty ark. Clothe your priests with righteousness. May those who have experienced your faithful love shout for joy. For the sake of your servant David, don't delay the return of your Messiah. I give you good instruction. Do not forsake my Torah. Now we bless God for giving us the living word in Messiah Yeshua. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, asher natan lanu hadavar, hachai b'mashiach Yeshua. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, ruler of the universe, who has given us the living word in Messiah Yeshua. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Okay, well, thank you so much, uh, Achim. Wonderful, wonderful. Always a blessing to hear the word of God. And boy, Romans 11, that's, that's an important one relative to our movement for sure. We're going to be dismissing in just a moment our four to eight-year-olds to kids' congregation. They're going to have some fun. Uh, and also, we want to lift up the nation of Israel. Uh, of course, she's in war right now, so we need to continue to lift her up. Don't let that get stale for you. Uh, we need to lift up our, our people over there and the Messianic body over there. Uh, and uh, things are still, the, the pressure from the world is just absolutely massive. Uh, so let's lift all of them up right now. Avinu Shabbat Shalom, Father in heaven, humbly we come before you, God, and we, we ask your touch on uh, Eretz Yisrael, Am Yisrael. Please be with the people of Israel, God. Uh, protect the IDF, Lord. Give their leaders the wisdom as to how to prosecute this uh, conflict. And uh, Lord, we, we pray for not only her political leaders, we pray for 
the, the uh, Messianic Jewish body in Israel, Lord, that you will please be with them, God. Uh, they, 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 along with everybody else in the country, have undergone such uh, incredible stress and grief and continue to do so. Uh, so, Lord, we do lift them up to you, uh, even right now, and ask your covering, and we pray for a revival amongst your people in the land as well. Uh, Lord, for that matter, we, we pray for a revival amongst our cousins, Lord, in Gaza, that you would, uh, Lord, reveal yourself to them as well uh, and their need for the Messiah. Uh, God, we thank you for this. Lord, we ask your touch on, our, on the YMJA folks that are here for the leadership team meetings this weekend. Ask you to anoint them, to bless them, to cover them, to give them uh, great wisdom as to how to proceed with the big Messiah conferences here so that lives are changed. Uh, thank you for them, Lord. And speaking of, Lord, and even for our little kids, we pray for them. We ask you to bless them. Thank you for parents that bring their kids to the house of God. What a beautiful thing that is. Thank you for our teacher volunteers. Uh, and please bless these kiddos, Lord. Thank you for them. B'Shem Yeshua. Amen. Okay, four to eight-year-olds, you're dismissed at this time. We're going to enter into the next phase of our worship service. Enjoy.
Emmanuel Kenu, our Father and our King. Oh, Lord, you are beautiful, Lord. Lord, so beautiful, Lord. Thank you for this Shabbat. We get to rest in you, Lord, that you've given us, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you, Lord, that we can, that you've given it to us for us to know more about you and know more how to live, Lord, for you. Lord, let every ear and every heart be open and ready to receive what you want them to receive. Lord, let your word flow clearly through our rabbi. Bless all in the hearing of this word and your word, Lord. We pray all this in your mighty name, Yeshua. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you so much, worship team. Wow, what a wonderful job. What a blessing for sure. As a side note, if you've ever wondered if uh, drums can be anointed, just, just listen and watch uh, Mei Mei. Just absolutely fantastic. Wow, she's such a good drummer. I love worship of the Lord. Amen. What a blessing it is. And, uh, and thank you so much for leading us in this uh, wonderful, beautiful worship here today. And indeed, there is no one uh, found worthy save for one. Uh, but one is all we need, our Messiah Yeshua. Amen? Amen. Ooh, boy, that's good stuff. Mm. We're going to start in the Torah today. I want us to go to the book of Exodus. The book of Exodus, please. I've been thinking a little bit. In fact, I was speaking with a member of my family this, uh, recently and talking about the movie The Prince of Egypt. Wow, what a great movie that is. I love that movie. Some great music in that movie. Speaking of good music, it's good stuff, right, Mikey? It's so good. I love it. Uh, okay, so in Exodus chapter 32, please, Moses uh, was, we see uh, an interesting character trait about Moses that I want to talk about today and to focus on, think about a little bit, at least start off with. Because Moses was someone who interceded for others. That is for absolute triple sure, man. We're going to read just a, a snippet of this story. And it's like, whoo, Moses, Moses uh, if you look deep into the Torah, as my father, Rabbi E, used to say, uh, Moses quit school because of recess. That's right. He don't play. Uh, Exodus chapter 32, Moses was someone who interceded for others. He boldly offered his own life and salvation, in fact, for the Israelites when God was about to judge them for the golden calf incident. Okay, so you have Moses come down the back. Okay, the, you got the golden calf. And, and let me tell you, God was not pleased. Of course he wasn't pleased. After all that he had done for the Israelites, my gosh, it was right after the 10 plagues. It was right after the parting of the Red Sea. Are you kidding me, my people? What were you doing? Turning to another God after just a few weeks of Moses up on the mountain, you've just got to be, it's, it's hard to even understand how they could have turned to, uh, to a God of stone, a God of gold at that point. This golden calf, and I'm sure that's the way God felt. It was like, you have got to be kidding me. Uh, uh, and deep in the tour in the Hebrew, you, you see God say, OMG. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, which would be funny. Uh, okay, uh, Exodus 32, verse 31. Here's the interaction. Then Moses returned to Adonai and said, Alas, these people have sinned greatly and made gods of gold. Yet now, please forgive their sin, Moses says to God. But if not, please blot me out of your book that you have written. Whoa, man of Shevitz, that's chutzpah, my friends. That is some serious chutzpah. Rabbi Shaul echoes that uh, in the Brich HaRashah, because when Moses said this to God, friends, this was not a negotiation ploy. This was not an empty bluff. Moses was speaking with God directly. You know how, you know, you watch these, these games online, you're flipping through channels, you see them doing this professional poker stuff, and, and sometimes, sometimes they make big bluffs, big 
big bluffs, and you can see the cards because there's a piece of glass there, but of course the opponents can't see the cards, and so, you know, it's a lot of times there are big bluffs in, in card games. Okay, big bluffs, putting all the money in, they ain't got anything in their hand. They're just bluffing, right? Friends, let me tell you something. Moses wasn't bluffing. He said, man, it's just unbelievable. For this people, the, for our people, the Israelite people who had just had the 10 plagues all come out of Egypt through the Red Sea, but all along the way, griping, complaining about Moses. So this is not like, you know, his besties. Okay, these were people who were uh, really in many ways, oftentimes, and even at that very moment, against Moses. They were against Moses. And so God was like, I'm going to destroy them all and start over with you, Moses. That's, that's what he said. And Moses was like, wait, 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 please don't, please don't, please don't, you know, please don't is one thing. I mean, you know, it's, it's like, it's one thing to say, God, please don't kill them all, even though they all deserve it, uh, and start over with me, and I would be like the, the, the new Abraham. I, I get that, but, but, but please don't, God, please. I mean, it's nice enough that he intercedes on their behalf and does something for them, since they were so against him and, and were so kind of jerkish about it and rebellious is the word, it, Dainu, it's enough that he did that. He didn't have to do that, did he, Ravi? But yet he did much more than this. He said, God, if, 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 please forgive them, but if you're not gonna forgive them, take out my name from your book that you have written. Wow. Wow, that is incredibly serious. The reason that you know he wasn't bluffing is because, again, when you bluff in these card games, the other players don't know the cards you're holding. God knows all your cards. <laughs> you can't bluff God. <laughs> And, and so the, this interchange, you know, Moses came with fear and trembling because it was God himself, but he knew what he was saying. And listen, there was a chance that God would have said, oh, really? Is that how you feel? Okay. All right. Fine. Well, I'll find somebody else to start over with because I'm really ticked off at these people. And you seem to be backing them. So, you know, hey, listen, that's, that's what you want. You got him. I mean, he, God could have said, Moses was taking a risk. A really big risk. He laid down his life before God on behalf of the people of Israel. Moses was willing to take a bullet for them. In the most literal of sense. In the most eternal of sense. Moses was t willing to take a bullet for them. This is a remarkable act of sacrifice. Beloved, I want you to think about that. People say, well, you know, why is Moses so highly regarded? Look at the text. He was willing to give up his own life for them. His own life eternally. He was willing to give up for these people who had been so horrific to him. That is a mind-blowing act of sacrifice. You know, I've met a few people along the way in my journey in life who are just kind of spiritually built different, <laughs> okay? In what way? I remember a guy of blessed memory in, in Shtarot, Israel. And Shtarot, Israel is, uh, you have to understand that that's a city that is literally a uh, stone's throw from Gaza. When I say a stone's throw, I mean like, if you got a really good arm, you could throw a stone and hit Gaza. You could, you, certainly with any kind of a weapon, it would not be hard at all. Uh, it's literally right across the border. It's a fairly sizable town. That is, it's the largest town down there in the south, uh, or right by uh, Gaza. You have Ashkelon, but then once you, once you pass that, it, you know, you pretty much got set a road down there. I've taken a, a number of you there on the advance trip to Israel. We go to Sederot, uh, and also on the YMJA trip, I typically go to Sederot. Okay, and so uh, in, in this town, now you got to understand that it's, it's a town that's in South Israel, but because it's so constantly historically, was under a threat from Hamas, 
for rockets because it was literally so close. I mean, I've, I've been there many times. So close. You were there with me, uh, Rebecca. And it's, it's so close that it's only a few seconds that you have to get to a bomb shelter. And it's frequently under bombardment uh, historically here uh, since 2005, okay? Right? Since Hamas has been just pot-shotting towards civilians for, for nearly two decades now since Israel completely withdrew from Gaza, by the way. Uh, and, uh, and, and so because of that, the city's composition is a little bit different than uh, a lot of Israel because you, you generally don't have really uh, affluent people uh, moving down to Shderot. Why? Because they're under constant threat of missile attack. Uh, and so uh, the, 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 the wages and the cost of living is very low in, in that city uh, because of the fact that it's, it's under constant rain and threat from Gaza. And so because of that, people uh, maybe of a lower socio, socioeconomic level has, have tended to kind of migrate there because it was cheaper to live which makes sense, but then that leads to uh, a city that has a little more poverty than most cities in Israel. Okay, so within this city, we would frequently go and visit somebody there, a man I worked with many times who led a ministry to the poor and the indigent in Shtarot. His name was Yishai Reinhardt of Blessed Memory. And uh, hands of mercy, man, I tell you what, I loved Yishai. Yishai was an unbelievable human being. He would care on so many on behalf of the Lord. Uh, he gave of himself so much. In his, in his later years, he had a heart condition, and, uh, and, and it surely would have been better for him just to simply rest at home. He had major heart condition. I, I was, everybody who knew him was aware of it. He's, he was known in the Messianic body in Israel, yet he still works so hard to help people. And I, I brought groups to him a number of times, and sometimes, uh, especially with the YMJA group, but sometimes some of the other groups, I would bring people to serve with him. So I would bring a group and we would volunteer down there. Some of you who are here today remember uh, Melissa and uh, some of you others, Ivan, when we were, when we went to Yishai's place and we would, we would help him uh, and, and he would be putting together packages, boxes of food and, and, and clothes that had been donated, getting ready and, and, and the place, the ministry building that he was in was just this tiny little house that was just, and, and he was making do and he was, and he was, he brought us one time to visit uh, a burn victim, uh, who, a young teenager who had been a horrifically burned, horrifically burned, uh, and who was just had nothing, and, and we were coming to bring him things, and uh, and he just loved people. He's one of those people, you know, the kind of person I'm talking about. Who, when I say would give you the shirt off his back. I'm sure that he frequently did actually take a shirt off and give it to people. That kind of a person, kind, loving, nobody is, is below him. Uh, he, he, he just was, was, gave his all, gave his everything he had for the Lord and for his people. In this, in this tiny little town that people really didn't know about. Uh, it's not like everybody in America and in the, the Christian world or the Messianic world, they all knew him because he was in Jerusalem or Tel Aviv. No, no, no. He, he was in the tiny town right by Gaza doing work that nobody else was doing. This was my friend Yishai, okay? And, uh, and he's, with, he's with the Lord now. His heart condition eventually took him on to be with the Lord but I got to tell you something, friends. I, I, I say his name of blessed memory with honor. Why? Because people like this are worthy of honor. They're worthy of honor. People who sacrifice themselves for the Lord and for his people. That's an honorable thing. Worthy of great honor. And so rare. So rare. There is someone in the scriptures 
that serves as quite an example for us in this regard. Uh, if we look in the Bible and we think about these kind of attributes, uh, we see it in the scripture when it comes to serving the Lord so fervently. When it comes to serving the Lord so fervently that one is willing to give up even his own life. When someone is so fervently serving God that they're willing to give up even their own life, I think that we can agree that one name really comes to mind right away when we think of the word and, and somebody like that. I think you probably already know I'm speaking, of course, about Epaphroditus. <laughs> Epaphroditus, I know, I know, it was a bit obvious. All of you were surely thinking that. You were probably like, a pa -pa oh, he said it before I could say it. Wow, boy, you know, I was going to say that. Epaphroditus, of course. I mean, wow, I know. I mean, Epaphroditus. Need I really even say more? I think you know the rest of the story. But, uh, but before we get into the text, first a little bit of background for you. Rabbi Shaul, Paul the Shaliach, had previously established the congregation. You know, he went on his, his journeys into uh, mostly Europe, but also Western Asia, and, uh, and had established congregations all over the place, all frequently receiving great persecution. One of the congregations that he established was in the city of Philippi, which was in uh, Macedonia, currently uh, in northern Greece, if you will, almost almost uh, getting close to Turkey in, in north uh, uh, eastern Greece and uh, the city of Philippi. And you can tell that this congregation that, that Rabbi Shul had established in Philippi, he was still very close with. And in fact, if, if you read the scriptures and you look at it, it, it seems pretty clear that Paul started a lot of different congregations, but this one had a special place in his heart. You could just, you could see it, you can read it if you look at it in context. There was a special relationship. Paul had a love, a special love for the congregation in Philippi. Uh, and he had not been there in some time. And at the point that he wrote the letter to the, the Philippian congregation, uh, it's believed that he was already a prisoner in Rome. Okay, so he was a prisoner in Rome, uh, likely kind of a house arrest kind of a thing. And in those days, when you were a prisoner, it wasn't like uh, it is here in uh, the United States or in much of the modern world where if you're a prisoner, you know, sometimes people say, well, listen, I'll, I'll go to prison, at least I get three square, <laughs> you know, three meals a day. Well, back then, it wasn't really like that. In fact, you needed somebody to help you if you were a prisoner. You needed somebody to help kind of sponsor you. This, this, wasn't, this was a different world, if you will. And so prisoners often relied on the kindness of others for food, for, for clothing, for bedding, for warm blankets, whatever it is. Whatever, whatever it is that they might need, they oftentimes were dependent upon others for such things. Well, the Kahila, the congregation in Philippi, clearly loved Paul. As I told you, they had a special relationship, even though there was quite a distance between where they were at right then, since Paul was probably in Rome. But so what did the, the congregation in Philippi do? They sent a messenger they sent a messenger to Rabbi Shaul to help him and to bless Paul. And his name was Epaphroditus. Philippians chapter 2. Philippians, we're going to go to Philippians chapter 2. Now, it seems as though, so that's a little context, and it seems as though Epaphroditus had indeed been helping Rabbi Shaul for some time. And he had done many things to help Paul. 
So, so here it is, this congregation in Philippi sends this, this person, this, the, a messenger, but not just a messenger, someone who, who, who was going to assist, work with, help Rabbi Shaul when he was in Rome in prison, which is when and where the book of Philippians was, was written. Okay, and so he's helping Rabbi Shaul and, uh, and, uh, for, for a good bit of time, it seems. Uh, and in fact, he helped Rabbi Shaul so much, and we don't know the details of it. They're not explicitly stated in the word, but we know that it nearly cost him his life. It nearly cost Epaphroditus his life. Him helping Rabbi Shaul and him serving the Lord and helping in the believing community, serving God, reaching out to others. When he was there with Paul, it nearly cost Epaphroditus his, his, literally his life as he was helping. And so finally, Rabbi Shaul decided to send his letter to the congregation in Philippi, which we know is the book of Philippians, and to send Epaphroditus back to them to deliver it. Okay, and so he had come from Philippi, served Rabbi Shaul, done so much that he, he nearly died. And then finally, Rabbi Shaul's like, okay, I got it. They're, they're, they're concerned about you in Philippi because they heard you were just about dead. And so uh, let, me, let me encourage them by sending a letter to them and you'll deliver it to them. That's the letter of Philippians, okay? But let's hear exactly what Rabbi Shaul says in his letter to the Philippian congregation as he mentions Epaphroditus. Philippians chapter 2, verse 25. Rabbi Shaul says, But I thought it necessary to send to you Epaphroditus, my brother and co-worker and fellow soldier, as well as your messenger and aid to my need. Wow, that's, that's a power fact sentence about one dude. I mean, you think about that. Think about the, the list that he just gave about Epaphroditus. Woo, man, that's a lot of good stuff. First of all, Rabbi Shul calls him his brother. This is my brother. So he probably had a relationship with Epaphroditus back in Philippi. He probably called him a path. No, I'm just kidding. I don't even know. <laughs> okay. He probably knew him back in Philippi. And then he comes and he's like, oh man, what did he, what must it have been like when, when Rabbi Shul saw Epaphroditus walk through the door? He was probably like, oh my gosh, my brother. He was under house arrest. He was under such persecution. And here is this familiar face of love in this congregation that he knew well and loved. And it was like, Oh my gosh, oh, they, look at that. It was probably some encouragement and some relief and a blessing to Rabbi Shaul more than you could even know. And he calls him his brother. So he had a, a deep and a special relationship with Epaphroditus and the Lord. He calls him his co-worker. So this means that Epaphroditus was instrumental in sharing the good news about Messiah. He was a worker for the Lord. This wasn't just simply like, uh, you know, somebody who was just a, a note taker for Paul. This wasn't simply a messenger, although he was that also. No, no, he was a fellow worker for God. This is somebody who was working for the Lord as part of the call of Rabbi Shaul to take the good news to the world. That This was a co-worker, a co-laborer, if you will. He also calls him his fellow soldier. This implies that Epaphroditus has been through the battles. You don't call somebody, this is my fellow soldier. Man, I can see him putting his arm around him, you know. Hey, this is my fellow soldier right here. Woo, man, we've been through the battles together, haven't we, Paf? <laughs> and, and he would say, please don't call me that. Please, please don't call me that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and so, but, but they've been through the battles together. This is, a, this is a, a heavyweight in his own right, Epaphroditus. And we, in fact, hear that he has indeed 
been through the, the battles, which we'll read in just a minute. He also mentions that he is a messenger from the Philippian congregation and an aid to Paul's needs. So on top of everything else, Epaphroditus also attended to Paul personally to help him to bless him. So, so he went out of his way to bless the man individually, personally. Surely he got stuff for him that he needed. Surely he prayed for him. Surely he uplifted him. Maybe got him sustenance, food, and, uh, and, 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 and beverage, and, uh, and clothing, or uh, maybe a pillow for crying out loud. When, you, when you're in prison back in those days, it was brutal. And it says he attended to his personal needs. Maybe, she, maybe he had a, a cut on them that he needed some. We don't exactly know all the details, but we know that Rabbi Shaul was very, very appreciative of Epaphroditus for all the, the things that, that he had done for him, even on a personal level. This is a lot that, that Epaphroditus has done. Let's continue. Verse 26, Philippians 2.26. He's still talking about Epaphroditus. For he was longing for you all in Philippi and troubled because you heard that he was sick. He certainly was sick, close to death. But God had mercy on him. And not only on him, but also on me that I would not have sorrow upon sorrow. Therefore, I have sent him with special urgency so that when you see him again, you might rejoice and I might be less worried about you. <laughs> so we see here that Epaphroditus, this is very interesting in, in, in the whole plot. So we see here that Epaphroditus in his service to the Lord and in his service to Paul somehow got so sick that he was close to death. That's what it says about Epaphroditus. So Rabbi Shul said, you heard he was sick? <laughs> you better believe he was sick. How bad was it? It was a bad case of COVID. <laughs> Deep in the Greek. You have to really read Greek well. <laughs> so Paul was sending him back home to reassure and encouraged the congregation in Philippi that he loved so dearly. So he was surely mixed on it because he loved having Epaphroditus there, but he sent him back because he knew that he longed for them and they longed for him. They wanted to make sure he was okay. And they wanted to see him even though he'd been such a blessing, of course. And then Rabbi Shaul, still talking about Epaphroditus. Boy, you didn't know there was so much about this guy, huh? Verse 29, Philippians 2, 29. Paul says to the Philippi, the congregation in Philippi, the Philippian congregation, he says, so welcome him in the Lord with all joy and hold men like him in high regard. Get that now, catch that, because it tells us something about the nature of God and what we should have is an aspirational goal in our own life. Hold men like him in high regard because he came close to death for the work of Messiah, risking his life to make up for what was lacking in your service to me. Okay, wow. So, so he just, he just kind of, man, he, he just went there with a, a pretty deep t teaching using Epaphroditus as an example. What did he say? Hold people like him in high regard. In high regard. When you got somebody like that, brother, sister, you hold them in high regard. Think about it for just a minute. Think about it. He risked his life for the work of Messiah. He gave his life for the Lord. Even unto death. Says he almost died. Why? For the work of the Lord. For the work of Messiah, it says it's very specifically right here. What a, what a non, think about Epaphroditus, y'all, and think about what he did. What a non-flashy thing to do. A lot of people just want to do whatever they can do to get a, to get a, a million views on Instagram <laughs> or on YouTube. It's like, let me do something really, hey, bold and outrageous. 
and let me get a lot of attention and let me get fame and, and everything. This was not Epaphroditus. No, 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 my friends. Not a flashy thing to do at all. Think about what he did. Epaphroditus was not the star. He was not the star. How much so? There's nobody in this room who was thinking of Epaphroditus when I said it. <laughs> no one, not one of you. And even when I said it, I bet you 95% of the, of the people watching online, I won't include all the Bible scholars in the room, of course, but 95% of you watching online never even heard of the guy. Never even heard of the guy. I think it's probably true that the majority of people never even heard of the guy. Never heard of the guy. Not the star. There's no book of the Bible named Epaphroditus. Epaphroditus. There's no, there's no book of the turn to Epaphroditus, chapter 7. No? He did, Epaphroditus did not gain from this. Many scholars think that Epaphroditus was not even in full time ministry, that he was just somebody who used everything he had, including his wealth, his money, to bless. See, here's the truth. Beloved, if each of us simply does whatever we can, then the world will change. Then the world would change. If we simply do whatever it is that we can do, then the world would change. It doesn't have to be Paul. Here's Epaphroditus who essentially enabled Paul's ministry, helped his brother. He wasn't looking for fame, fortune, credit. No, beloved. He was looking to serve. He was looking to help. He was sacrificial to the point of his life. That's the level. I didn't say somebody like that should be honored. It's in the Bible. Rabbi Jules said that. If you take him at his word, it's clear that Epaphroditus was all in. He nearly died in his assignment. That's how all in he was, friends. I think of my friend Yishai in Shtarot. When he Passed away in Israel, the, Isra the Israeli Messianic community mourned for sure. They mourned for sure, but at the same time, I'm going to tell you, you'll see no statues of him anywhere. There's no monuments in his honor. But he wasn't looking for that. He didn't care about that. But the burn victim that he took us to surely remembers him. The poor and the hungry knew him. And they knew of his walk with the Lord also. What's that worth? What's that worth? Isn't that how we'd all like to be remembered? It's about our walk with the Lord and how we loved God and loved other people. I mean, at the end of the day, really, isn't that what we'd all like? I've done a spate of funerals lately. I've, I've had a, it's been a little bit unusual. I don't know, I've done three or four in the last couple months. I've done dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of funerals. And you know what? At, at the end of the day, it, it's, it's not about how many followers you have on social media or, or about how much money you have in the bank or uh, or, or, or how, how beautiful you are, or your, your amazing house. <laughs> At the funerals, they talk about if they love the Lord, if they love people. See, that's what Yeshai did. That's what Yeshai did. There are other people. My friend Arthur back there remembers well Jerry Rutkin. 
He's an old friend. He's, he passed away a few years ago now, the late Jerry Rutkin, this Jewish believer, this Messianic Jew from New York. He was a former heroin addict. And he dedicated his life. <laughs> it's so interesting. It's just, it's absolutely revelatory, y'all. It's, it's what's important if you really care about such things. He dedicated his life to teaching on one thing, humbleness of spirit. That's what he taught on. My, my dad, uh, and then even when I took over for the early years, would have Jerry Rutkin come in to speak every year at Beth Hillel. My dad used to, used to say, we're having Jerry Rutkin in whether we need him or not. <laughs> Why? Because it's every year. And he gave basically a, the same or a very similar message. And it was always on humbleness of spirit. I can remember him in my, in my head. I know you can too, Art, and many of you other old timers. Precious God, I humble myself before you. Not my will be done, but your will be done. Lord, I know nothing relative to you. Show me your ways. Teach me your paths, O oh God. Lord, let me rely on your word. Your word is a lamp into my feet and a light into my path, Lord. Lord, I need your word. It sustains me, God, because I, I, I don't know what to do without you, Lord. Let, let me not see myself highly in my own eyes, Lord. I, I can hear Jerry Rutkin in my mind speaking such things. Precious God, I humble myself. I remember his teachings. Don't, don't pray to God and say, God, humble me. It's not a biblical prayer. It's, it's a prideful prayer. You're telling God what to do. No, scripture says, I humble myself before you, precious God. That's the biblical way to do it. I humble myself before you. It's a humble thing to do. Humbleness of spirit, what he taught on year after year after year. He had a great influence on our congregation, on me too as a kid growing up and, 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 and on into my 20s and you know, since I've now hit my 30s. <laughs> to me he was a giant of faith truly I mean uh, I remember when I was in my office with him after one of the services and I said Jerry that was a wonderful message and he said oh thank you he had that heavy 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 Bronx accent wow boy that was one of the heaviest New York accents uh, uh, and he wrote a book, Damascus Appointment. Uh, and, and I remember we were sitting in my office, just he and I, and, uh, and he looked outside and said, hmm, it's raining. And I said, yeah, Jerry. And he was like, and then he proceeded to quote from memory about probably 40 straight separate verses about rain. One after the other, 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 after the other. And after three, you're thinking, okay, that's, that's kind of cool, you know? And then after 15, you're like, wow, he really knows the Bible a lot. And then, like, you hit about 25, and you're like, why am I the rabbi here? I have no business. <laughs> <laughs> I, I so know absolutely nothing. My gosh. Oh, man. What is going on here? But yet he was so humble. He was just, the word was in him so much, y'all. Yet almost no one today has even ever heard of him. Let me tell you something. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. He wouldn't care. God knows him. And I believe that God welcomed him home with a great welcome. See, Rabbi Shaul tells us to hold people like that in high regard. Hold people like that in high regard. Let's go to chapter 4 of Philippians. Philippians chapter 4. Rabbi Shaul continues in his letter to the Philippian congregation. And in concluding the epistle, uh, Rabbi Shaul again mentions Epaphroditus. 
Some of you are like, doggone it, man, that's a lot. I have, why haven't I heard of this guy? I should have known about this guy. I understand a, a very kind of obscure person in scripture, but somebody of great importance in Rabbi Shaul's life. You best believe when we get to heaven, we, you see Rabbi Shaul, you might meet Epaphroditus. Philippians chapter four, verse 18, he's concluding his letter to the, con- to the congregation there. And Rabbi Shul says, 418, says, but I've received everything and have more than enough. He just talked about being content. I am amply supplied, having received from Epaphroditus what you sent. Oh, it's a fragrant aroma, an acceptable sacrifice, pleasing to God. My God will fulfill every need of yours according to the riches of his glory in Messiah Yeshua. (laughs) What's great? A lot of you know that verse, right? God will supply all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Messiah Yeshua. A lot of believers know that verse, and rightly so. That's a great verse. But it's said in context of talking about whilst he was in prison, he's saying this, first of all. And whilst he's still in prison, saying it, that God will supply all my needs. And it's at the end of his passage talking about contentment, which by the way, I spoke about last Shabbat, contentment. So if you're tuning in, you want to hear something about contentment a little bit earlier in Philippians 4, tune in last week (laughs) and you can hear that message. Okay. But uh, it's right after Paul has just said in the passage right before it, that he's learned to be content in all situations. So he's learned to be content in all situations, including the situation that he's in right now, which is when he's in prison. And, and, and he warmly thanks the Mishpacha in Philippi and thanks them for sending Epaphroditus with gifts for him. What gifts are they? We don't really know. It doesn't say. Something that was a great comfort to him, something that helped him, something that encouraged him. Just saying Epaphroditus was a blessing to him. But they, they sent stuff with him, and, and it helped him, and it was a blessing to him. See, my friend, Epaphroditus was a bearer of blessings. He was a bearer of blessings to others, including Rabbi Shaul. Friends, we too should be a bearer of blessings toward others. Is this your heart? I mean, I'm asking you to really think today. I'm asking you to really, really think, is it in your heart, Lord, let me be a bearer of blessings to others. So many people, I think, in America want to be the recipient of blessings. Bless me, bless me, Lord. I think it reminds me of a Keith Green song. Now, Lord, help me be the bearer of blessings to others. Man, I, my hope and prayer is that the, the YMJ group that's here this weekend, I hope that's your heart, you know? That I hope that that's your heart, is, is, to, is to be a bearer of blessing to all the young people that you're gonna be serving this summer. That, that's gotta be the motivation, you know? That's gotta, be, that's gotta be your motivation. That should be all of our motivation, to be, to be a, a bear of blessing, but, but a significant one. Because friends, significant meaning with, er, with all of our heart, with everything in us, not holding anything back. Epaphroditus certainly did. He almost died for the sake of God and serving others. Moses, you heard what he did and was willing to do. But, but here's the key. Sort of like Epaphroditus, you don't have to be a Rabbi Shaul. Some people think, well, I'm not, I'm not in full-time ministry. I'm not, I'm not up there speaking, and I'm not there on YouTube and having lots of people watch me and hear the message, and what, you know, what, what can I do? I mean, uh, I've just got my job, or I'm in school, or whatever it is, and I, I, is there really much I can do? You can simply be an Epaphroditus. You don't have to be Shaul. Just be Epaphroditus. Because here's the truth, Epaphroditus' efforts help enable Paul to do his ministry. Paul calls him a fellow soldier. 
But remember this, friends, there are many more privates in the army than there are generals, and there has to be. Think about that for just a minute. Well, I'm not really that important. I'm not that. No, 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 no. There are a lot more privates in the armies than there are generals, and that's the way it's supposed to be. The key is for everyone in the army to do their own part. Do what you are called to do. It doesn't have to be grand. It doesn't have to be grandiose with flashing neon lights. No, it can be relatively small, but it's got to be with your all. And it's got to be your heart. It's got to be your heart's intent, if you will. If you do God's, if you do, for what it's worth to you, if you do, God says that he will find you and hold you in high regard. It's not by me. It's not by peers. That's by God. This is what he said. Those people are worthy of being held in high regard. And I want to to conclude with Yeshua, who both models and teaches us about this exact kind of love. Let's turn to John 15 as we prepare to close. John 15. Wow. Listen to what Yeshua says in Yochanan, John chapter 15. It's, it's a passage that you've read, you've heard. Unlike Epaphroditus, you're more familiar with it. But as we've talked all about Epaphroditus and what he did, I think that the passage takes on a little different meaning if we look at it in that context. So let's take a look at it here, verse 12. It says, Yeshua says, this is my commandment, that you love one another just as I have loved you. How did he love us? No one has greater love than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. Wow, there it is. There he just kind of dropped the mic. See, friends, in the end, it comes down to love. Yeshua says, greater love is no one than this. He laid down his life for his, str- for his friends. Now, is he talking literally? Yes, at times, possibly. But he's also speaking figuratively, my friends. We have to have a mindset of laying down our lives for others, esteeming others above ourselves, putting others first, if you will. This is what Moses did. This is what Moses did. Pretty impressive guy. This is what Epaphroditus did. This is what Yeshua did. Is this, is this what you will do? I'm asking for you to challenge yourselves, beloved, to seek to put on this attitude. It's a choice. Because Moses could have let the people pay. Yeshua could have let us bear the consequence of our own sin. And yes, Epaphroditus could have just let Paul suffer. He didn't have to go. He could have simply said no. But he said yes. And Paul said that such like him that sacrificially give for God's kingdom should be held in high regard. So let's purpose to do this more than we did before. The title of the message is, together, Epaphroditus. Let's bow our heads. <laughs> I thought that you would guess that one, if you could pronounce it. <laughs> Good old Epaph. I want to thank, thank you, Lord. And I want to ask this question. I want to ask if there's anybody here who's never said a prayer to receive Yeshua as your Messiah. If you're here and you've never given your life to God, but you want to, raise your hand and we'll pray together. 
If you've never said yes, never committed your life to Yeshua, to Messiah, asking him to forgive you of your sins, you've never done that before, but you want to raise your hand if there's anybody here who's never done so but wants to. (laughs) Maybe you're watching online or listening on the podcast and that's you. If so, say this simple prayer after me. Say, dear God, I humble myself before you. I ask Yeshua to come into my heart. I believe he's risen again, sitting at your right hand. Please forgive me, God. I'm sorry. I'll live the rest of my days for you. Thank you, Lord, in Yeshua's name. If you said that simple prayer, please, if you're watching online or listening in the podcast, send us an email. We want to celebrate with you. If you're in the room here, And that's the first time you said that prayer. See me after the service. I just want to celebrate with you. Lord God, I want to thank you for Epaphroditus. What what an obscure character in the Bible, but one of of, of really importance. Importance in as much as he serves as an example about how it doesn't have to be of great importance to be important to you. Lord, what's important is that we have a heart of self-sacrifice when it comes to our to others, and to you, Lord. Wow, Epaphroditus literally nearly just gave his life, Lord, out of service to you and to Rabbi Shaul. Thank you for Epaphroditus. Thank you for his example. Thank you for his instruction, for the teaching, the, the, what he's demonstrated to us that we can model ourselves after and that you say should be held, held in high regard, Lord. So we do so even today. I thank you for this. Help us, Lord, because it's against our flesh. Help us, God. I thank you for this. We bless you. Bless you for the Shabbat and for all the blessings that you so generously pour out into our lives. Thank you for these things. B'Shem Yeshua. Amen and amen. Thank you, Rabbi, for bringing us that word. I'd like to call up our cantor for the Amronic benediction. Please rise. In Numbers 622, the Lord said to Moses, speak to Aaron and his sons and tell them, this is how you are to bless the children of Israel. In this way, they are to put my name on the children of Israel so that I may bless them. Please bow your heads and prepare to receive Adonai's chosen blessing, the Aaronic benediction. Yivarechech Adonai v'yishmarecha Yaher Adonai panavelecha v'chunecha Yisa Adonai panavelecha v'yasem lecha Shalom. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. B'shem Yeshua HaMashiach, Shalom. In the name of Messiah Yeshua, Prince of Peace. Amen. Well, thank you to each and every one of you who's joined us here in person and online. We're going to end our service with a closing song, but afterwards, if you need any prayer, we'll have some leaders out in front to give you some prayer. And uh, if you are receiving prayer, just let's leave these first two rows open for those of you who are receiving prayer. And if you want prayer and you're online, email us um, and, and click on the description box below. After the service, we welcome each and every one of you guys to join us out in the foyer or going to the library downstairs to schmooze, greet anyone with a name tag, and let's uh, remember to join us next week with the joy of the Lord and the Shabbat. Let's go out with joy, invite a friend, invite a Jewish friend. It's as easy as sending a link. Shabbat shalom, y'all.